again to Dating Diaspora. Guys, it's been such a long time. The last time I saw you, Shemaine was pregnant. <laughs> now she has a baby. Yeah. Tine was um, started a new job, right? And yep. Musa, Musa, what we, oh, Musa was going to be buying a new car. That's the last time I saw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I know, lots changed. Right. And I just got my promotion. So life has changed a lot. Congratulations. Congratulations, <laughs> Congratulations to everybody on everything yeah everybody something good has happened to everybody yeah that's true <laughs> well i mean we've been telling everybody how we've been coping with uh coronavirus so, and it's been nice to hear from other people who've like sent us in videos to tell us how they're doing um but yeah i mean how are you guys doing we're how many weeks into the lockdown like four five mm -hmm. It's, it's, uh, how are you guys doing? It's the new normal, I guess. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it's, it's crazy and scary at the same time. Do you know, like so many times, like at night, I can go to bed and literally think, this is not real. Literally, this is surreal. Like this is happening all over the world. So that's, that's been like, hard to wrap my head around you know so yeah but otherwise you know it's just like you said a new normal you have i've saw today like driving on the highway most of the cars have surgical masks or some form of mask sitting in their you know in their dashboard so it's just a new normal of how you know life is going to change yeah, yeah. what do you guys think because you know how everyone is like okay so <clears throat> life is going to go back to normal but it's not going to go back to like normal, normal. So what do you guys think that's well, I think going to be like? Life as we knew it is not going to be the same, right? Even when you look at like visiting, like, because I'm in the medical field, going to doctor's appointments, all that stuff is going to change, right? Um, maybe doctors might start taking symptoms more online, you know, before you come in, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, dentists, um, a, a while ago, dentists never used to wear masks or gloves like years ago. And, you know, they've evolved as well. They're not wearing masks and gloves, you know, masks. So, I mean, like a long time ago, they never used to like worry about that stuff, you know, but now they are. So life is definitely going to change even with uh, kids going to school. I think life is definitely going to change a lot. That's true. But so I feel like sometimes when we go through crazy things in life, it's we get changed for the better. You know what I mean? So it's like sometimes you have to go through something bad in order to get something better. That's how I think, right? So we don't know what um, is going to happen. They say, what do they say? Um, necessity is the mother of invention. So if you have to do something, it forces you to invent a way. So even right now, a lot of things that you, you thought like had to or that we had to really do in person, we're finding ways. Can you believe it? I have like noise canceling headphones. So I'm like, I don't hear anything. But I, like, I kind of hear it. But I had to do one of my conference calls this week. Someone's like, um, is the baby okay? I'm like, oh, y'all can hear that? <laughs> <laughs> we can hear him, but he's quiet. They're like, now. Very clearly. I was like, <laughs> I'll be back. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm saying. <laughs> New mom life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you were saying so necessity the, is the you, what we, mother of invention. Yes. Right. So, what I was saying is now that we're forced to like be home, we're figuring out that we can do a lot of things like not in person or just other ways so people are inventing new ways new applications new ways for us to connect and i feel like even after this is over we're still going to be able to benefit from those ideas and those inventions so it's like a good thing like that's going to come from this bad event <laughs> it's like let me go check on my child <laughs> you know when i think about like what's going to change i see how people are saying hopefully we come out of this um kinder to each other more patient with each other because even when you think about how when you used to think about jobs that are considered essential jobs and all of this um i don't know necessarily if you used to think about grocery store clerks and um garbage truck pickups as like essential right i mean like we know that they are but 
that's kind of highlighted a little bit more like what do we need to survive who do we need to be thankful for because those people are putting themselves at risk showing up every day to help you buy your groceries so you can survive right so they're essential in a way that maybe we weren't thinking about before all of this so i when they when, when i see people saying hopefully we come out of this kinder more patient with each other and just like value life a little bit more i kind of feel like yeah i hope we do because you know how we used to talk about like mental health wasn't something super major people used to you know talk about i mean after this there's no way that people's mental health is not going to be affected that's going to be like forefront you know people are dying you can't even bury your people who are dying um you see all those mass graves and all of that like how is that going to affect people day to day when we go back to real life some people are going to be scared to even step outside even past all of this is gone so hopefully it does allow us to just appreciate certain things more and just be more patient and kind with each other i think that's one thing yeah. I I mean, I, I also think some things that may possibly change or may be revisited is how um, businesses are set up as far as uh, how the distance or proximity, you know, we're all into this open desk seating now and, you know, all that kind of thing. So businesses, I think, will start to reevaluate, you know, uh, their employees um, and also um, probably reevaluate if they need as much retail space as they've been renting out, you know? So maybe commercial real estate may start to change that. Um, maybe having more video mm. conferencing and more things like that. So maybe they can decrease their, their real, real estate uh, monthly rentals. But I also think that businesses have had to look into their supply chain and see if it's really cheaper to do things overseas than it is to bring them, you know, american made american bound so that's some of the things that i think are probably having discussions at pretty high levels across the across the states even across the world yeah true what about this whole um how did you guys feel when it started and everyone was talking about how black people can't get the virus <laughs> I thought it was funny at first because I, you know, black people, like I, I mentioned, I feel like I mentioned this one on an episode before, like the way we like to joke about things, you know, our pain has always been, we've been like, if we didn't joke about it or make light of it, I feel like we probably wouldn't have survived all of the craziness that we've gone through as a people. Can you imagine all that? So we've always been able to like make light of or make fun of things. So I feel like, I feel like it started off as a joke. Like, I don't think people really thought they were invincible to this mm -hmm. or maybe they did like, hey, it happened to us black people. And then now reality is about to hit that um, it lot, like is it, it's Chicago and New Orleans, right? I think they said, I don't remember it, the statistics exactly, but I know Louisiana, they said black people, are like 33% of the population, yet 70% of the death rate yeah. for COVID-19 is because of the underlying diseases that we have. And it's like, it was a joke at first, but it's like, uh -huh, it ain't funny anymore because we're getting hit harder like than any other demographic. Yeah. It's really quite scary when you think about it um, in terms of just how I mean, people really were not taking this seriously. And I think there's still some people who really are not taking it seriously. I think last time we talked, Charmaine, you talked about people being on golf, uh, like still being out playing golf and stuff. And that's still happening, like right now. Um, so it scares me that some people feel this sense of like invisibility, invincibility when it comes to it. But it's like <laughs> viruses don't discriminate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the one thing that I think this virus had is make everyone equal, right? Uh, unfortunately, so it's like whether it's a celebrity or whether it's, you know, the Detroit bus driver driving the bus, you know what I'm saying? Um, it hit us, it hit us pretty hard. And like you said, we were joking about it. Um, I remember we were, you know, I was at a birthday party right before shutdown and we were like, oh yeah, we're, we should be fine. You know, it's not us, you know, it's not for us. You know, this is our reparations. And, and it was, you know what I mean? Like, okay, I get it. We, we make light of things, but now it's time to be very, very, very serious about it and make sure we, you know, adhere to the advice that's being given by who and the CDC. 
Um, so I wish that, you know, as funny as we were making light of it before, we can just come together and really start to, you know, help and protect our communities, whether it's home or abroad. Yeah. I work in like senior community, right? So, you know, our seniors, you know, once they get hit by that, it's pretty bad. People should just really learn to stay home and, you know, listen to the guidelines. I mean, it's really hard. Now, staying home is not easy to be told to stay home, even as an adult, right? Imagine today, it's Easter Sunday. How many places would you have been? Like, if you wake up and think, okay, if I had gotten up, got into church, maybe you pass through and pick up some dessert, go to the house, pick up a dish that you're making, then go to your aunt's house and then, you know, visit and, and, and you know, socialize with family and friends, right? But um, I work in senior community and, you know, we work, so staff goes out, you know, we go home and we come in, right? And the way I always look at it is we're the ones who are out in the community, like they're just, you know, in the retirement homes or in assisted livings, right? So when we, whatever we, whatever decisions we're making right now, right, are decisions that are also going to affect their health right? And as well as our, our homes when we come to our families. So for us, like at my job, they've said, you know, it's either, they really would last, they're asking for us to just go home and go to work, you know, and it, you know, it takes a, a, a discipline, a very, very like special discipline because you care for the people that you work with every day, right? So you're not going to be careless and go to a church or go, and I'm not saying be going to church is careless, but in this time, right, they're saying stay home or you're going to end up at a party or you're going to, you know, catch a flight to, you know, wherever, right? Um, you know, you have to just listen for now, like go home, go to work, go home, go to work. Because if you take that virus into your job, it, it, could, it could be detrimental, right? And we are seeing that with communities, like long-term communities around where we live here in the Dallas area. I'm sure you guys have heard on the news that there's some communities that have, cases that have tested positive. So I really like the idea and it's hard and, and it's really hard, but I really do like the idea of people just listening and being obedient. It's, it's hard, I know, <laughs> we're adults, right? It's hard for our children. You know, what about us, the adults, right? So, I mean, it, life is definitely gonna change, but I think if people just stop and just take a step back and just say, you know what, let me stay home for, for four weeks, let me listen to what they're saying, and then see what happens, you know, the, the, the graphs are gonna curve, I guess, the way they want them to curve to where no deaths, no new cases, right? So I think life is definitely gonna change, but it starts with us to make that change. To, to, for positive change. So people don't get sick, people, you know, people stop dying. That's what I think. Because I work in senior community and it's passionate to me when I see people leave and go and do some stuff. I, my, you know, my mom is in the 60s. So you know, it, it's just one of those things where it really hits close to home. And I think for most of us on the group, right? Yeah. 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 For sure. Okay, so did you guys, I, I watch CNN a lot. A lot. And I, some people have stopped watching the news. I, I keep watching the news. Most of my family members have stopped watching news. Um, also, are you still watching the news? I've drastically limited how much news I'm watching. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm not going to lie. Right. I, was, I, I, so I, I, I check the news. I, I think I check the news daily. I just, oh. I just, I just want to know what the numbers are looking like. What are the new, mm -hmm. what's the new info that's coming out? What are the new guidelines mm -hmm. being said? Because it's changing mm -hmm. daily. So I just, I check, I check, I would say once a day. Did you guys hear about the I, Prime Minister of New Zealand? What she did? No. You just go read up on it. I, she's done amazing. 39 year old, I forget her name. I mean, she's done amazing for New Zealand. It's a story that you have to go and read because they ran it on CNN and I caught the tail end of it. But I think they were saying like, there's not a lot of cases. And I think she was very proactive when she closed the borders quickly, you know, to, to, you know, to limit, you know, travel and exposure. So just go in and kind of read about it. And then you read that and then you read what's happening in Africa, right? Where some people are still going out, living their lives, doing whatever they used to do. So I, I, I don't know. And then you come to America and some people are telling you, oh, you can't tell me what to do. And, you know, so just go and read and see what she's done. What she's done is very impressive. Just so you guys know. There's, I think, I don't even know if there's many deaths in New Zealand, but just go and look. I wouldn't expect anything less because she's a woman, right? Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, give us just a sneak peek. What, like, what is she doing? Right. I think they, she just, you know, cl closings and lockdowns. And I think she closed her borders, if I'm not mistaken, to where, yeah, you know how New Zealand's also, it's far on its own. It's way somewhere there on its yeah. own. You know, it doesn't have a lot of, country, you know, but just yeah, go. I, I, I thought that. 
Yeah, I caught the tail end of the story, but she's done, all I know from the biggest story is that she's done magnificent in terms of locking down, you know, being proactive, you know, keeping exposure out. And, you know, she's done amazing in this particular time of COVID-19. Yeah. I will definitely go check that out. Yep.